The Friends of Bulgaria is a very loosely based organisation. Uh, it's, uh, it's linked to the efforts of Monaghan Rotary Club in Bulgaria, but separate from them. Uh, several of us who are members of Monaghan Rotary are also members of the Friends of Bulgaria. But the Friends of Bulgaria doesn't have a constitution or a committee. They're just simply the people in Ireland here that has uh, a strong passion and a strong love for uh, the Bulgarian culture, the Bulgarian heritage, the way that the Bulgarians live, how they conduct their lives. It was incredible in 1980, uh, there was a school group going from Monaghan to Bulgaria on a holiday and one of the teachers who were friendly with said, listen we have six places left here with yourself and your wife and a few of the boys, uh, we'd like to come. So we just, uh, that's what we did. and. Again, I said it was a communist country then, but I suppose we fell in love with the place straight away. The, the connection with Bulgaria began in the late 1980s with two of our Rotarians, Sean Boylan and Brendan Monaghan, uh, on a skiing trip to uh, Bulgaria to Pamporo. I heard about this young girl in Chapelari who was suffering from PKU, uh, Theodora, and uh, indeed our early involvement with uh, Bulgaria was the Theodora project, which was to supply the special food uh, which her condition required. Uh, and indeed we've been continuing to do that right up to the present day. When we had Theodora here, we also had a civic reception for her in the town council. And this was uh, a great delight for us uh, that she was uh, accepted by the, the council who, who have warmly give us support and also we must say that uh, our twin Rotary Club is the North Down Rotary Club and they have uh, been wonderful. Every year they give us uh, a substantial amount of money towards the Theodore project and uh, it has kept our two clubs very close together and Theodore also visited them on the occasions when she was here in Ireland. Theodore now is just a wonderful person uh, it's a wonderful blessing to us all. Um, she's vibrant, she's happy, and uh, she's perfect. And uh, she calls us uncle. <laughs> it's wonderful to see that Theodora, uh, her health is great. She's, she's now working. It's, it's just wonderful to see. Uh, Theodora is now 21 and is uh, finished school and working in Chapelari uh, and uh, uh, as a result of contacts between the Strinsky family uh, and other uh, individuals in the locality uh, we got involved for example with the local clinic uh, in providing some financial support and some equipment uh, for, for the clinic in Chapelari and for the uh, regional hospital in Smolan. My name is Constantine Petrov Dinko and I am 10 years of age. My favourite foods are pizza, pancake, spaghetti, donuts with honey and toasted bread with honey. My favourite games to play are swimming, basketball and football. The town of Ruse is where Irene and Coco live. It is to the north of Bulgaria on the Danube, hundreds of miles away from Chapelari. Like most towns in Bulgaria, there is a great sense of historic pride and is a caring, family-centred environment. We first heard about the, 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 the Coco situation through our friends in Chapelari. Coco is a, a very uh, normal, uh, uh, busy, cheeky nine-year-old, as nine-year-old boys should be. Uh, he's uh, very uh, talented uh, in school, uh, doing extremely well. He's also interested in, in sport uh, and of course since his operation uh, all of that activity has become possible for him. I was 28 years old when I was pregnant with Coco. It was a bit late because I wanted to graduate first, so the baby was expected. When he was born, everything was normal. 
Nobody said uh, that something was wrong uh, with the baby. He was born in Plovdiv in the military hospital. We went to doctors, but nobody explained to us that he had a genetic valvular defect. Nobody mentioned anything to me. Everything I was hearing was, it wasn't possible to be done, it's too late, there is no hope. Her young son, Constantine, better known as Coco, uh, had been born with very serious heart defects. The blood supply going into the heart and coming out of the heart, all the veins were all in the wrong places. Essentially, the heart had to be remodeled and uh, the veins had to be redirected to the proper chambers. When Coco was, was diagnosed with his heart defect, I think he was around about a year and a half, two years of age. At the time when we realized uh, uh, the project was brought to our attention, Coco was around about five, five and a half years of age. And his operation took place in London when he was around about um, six, six and a half years of age. If we hadn't have intervened at that time, Coco may not have seen his seventh or eighth birthday. Irina had already said that she had lived so many experiences of false hope. People who said they would do this and do that, and yes, we'd sort it out, and it never materialised. I felt a wee bit the same as what Sean Boylan said in the early years with Theodora. I said to Brent, we're going to do this. It's going to happen. The amount of money that was needed was a small fortune. It was uh, 30,000 sterling. You know, when you're dealing with somebody's life, you know, money really shouldn't come into the situation. Uh, his heart condition was a complicated one, uh, and uh, it required him coming to uh, Great Ormond Street in London uh, for the initial operation. I was thinking that things were sorted. I didn't have any of this money. We were in Velingrad. We stayed a week in a sanitarium and on the way back, it was evening time. My phone rang. I never will forget this day. I was pregnant in my seventh month. So I picked up the phone. I couldn't recognize the number. A Bulgarian voice said, hello, we don't know each other. My name is Vasco and I want to tell you very good news. Do you have time? And I said, no problem. We were on a walk and going back to Rose. I want to tell you that the money for the surgery of your son, Constantine, is collected. Everything is sorted, they've been sent to the hospital and a date has been set for his surgery. 30th of August, you have to be in London. We know that you have some money collected, you have only to organize your flights. Everything else in the hospital is sorted and paid. You won't have any problems. To be honest with you, I was standing up. I just sat down in the corridor and I didn't know what to say. Then I got a permission from the head gynecologist in Rusi Hospital that I have permission for an early port. Two weeks early. Actually, it wasn't two weeks, it was 11 days. He said, it's enough time to you to pull yourself together and organize yourself. And I gave a birth to my daughter on the 15th of August. And on the 26th of August, I was on the flight to London. Because of the complexity of Coco's condition, Professor Elliot decided that the surgery should be performed in two sections. The first, in Great Ormond Street Hospital in London, and the second later in the National Cardiology Hospital in Sofia. The first part of the surgery went well, and Coco pulled through. But towards the end of the surgery, there was a slight complication. Coco's mother became gravely concerned. I said to myself that I'm going back with my child. It doesn't matter what happens. 
I didn't care about anybody else, relatives, friends. Maybe it's a sin, but I didn't care about my new baby daughter. I said to myself, if he stays here forever, I'm staying with him. But thank God everything was okay. Four o'clock in the morning, they said to us that everything is okay. We could leave and see him in the morning. Uh, Eighteen months after the initial surgery in London, uh, he had the, uh, the, the final surgery in Sofia. Uh, Coco is now perfect. The uh, uh, operations were a complete success and he should be able to, uh, to lead a completely normal, healthy life. One thing I have always um, remarked uh, when, with the Coco operation in Sofia, that the, the team in the hospital there, by God, they have the expertise. They have, they have it up here. They have it here in their hands. They don't necessarily um, uh, totally rely on, on to have the state-of-the-art equipment. Uh, and um, that was quite evident when Martin Elliott was there. Martin Elliott um, felt very comfortable working with uh, the likes of the team that was over there. Um, he hadn't the trappings of Great Ormond Street Hospital around him, but he felt very comfortable with the expertise that he had around him. Uh, that's, the, that's the payback, that's the satisfaction for being involved in work like this. Uh, you, uh, uh, it's just uh, to know that you've played some small part in uh, assuring uh, the future of, of some young folk. To the people of Ireland, I just want to say that you're a beautiful people with big hearts and I never will forget you. Especially David Trum and Raymond Wilkinson and Brendan Monaghan, every member of the Rotary Club in Monaghan and all of the citizens of this town who donated money for the surgery of my son. That helped give him a second life. All of these people that love children and gave a second life to my son, to live, to play, to smile. I think if they weren't there, all of this wouldn't happen. Thank you for everything.